Hey, what's up guys? Nate here from Protoculture. Welcome back to Sonic Academy. And today we are checking out Moog Music's first foray into the plugin world. Now Moog has had some software releases in the past, mostly in the way of iOS uh, instruments, but this is their first collection of VST plugins. And they've chosen some fantastic kit to reproduce in software, namely their famed Moogafoga series of pedals. Now these were introduced in 1998 and were in production for about 20 years until recently they were discontinued I believe they had stock at one point of the filter and the phaser, but you cannot get these in hardware anymore. And these guitar stomp boxes have achieved a legendary status over the years. So it's great to have these now in software. So this bundle includes seven of uh, the pedals. Uh, I believe there were 20 initially made. Um, they've included the MF-101, which is the low pass filter, the MF-102 ring modulator, the MF-103 12 stage phaser, the 104 analog delay, the 105 MRF, the 107 Freak Box, and the 108 Cluster Flux. So seven pedals in total. Let's dive in. We're going to take a listen to what they sound like, look at some of the controls, and they've got a neat little trick up their sleeve as well that we'll check out in just a bit. Let's dive in and take a look. Right, so I've got these all lined up for us here. I'm just playing a sound source from Anna, just a simple saw wave to begin with. And let's take a look at the filter first. Classic Moog low pass filter. You've got two pole and four pole modes. Now just take a listen to the growl when you kick in some of the resonance here. You can link the output so you can drive the filter quite a bit harder as well. Let's bump the resonance all the way up. You can get it to self oscillate obviously as well. Um, you've also got the envelope follow here so we can dial that in too. And just a gorgeous tone that you get out of that. It's a real proper uh, growl that you get from this filter. Now, all of them have some additional uh, settings that you can tweak from the back end here. You've got a stereo envelope for this one, and then the response time for the envelope that you can tweak too. <laughs> Cool, uh, let's move on to the ring modulator next. So the ring modulator, you can get everything from sort of quite subtle um, stereo widening uh, right through to completely wacky um, ring modulator effects. We've got some fairly subtle settings dialed in here, just some nice sort of stereo uh, movement going on. We can bump up the frequency. Let's kick in the modulator signal into high now. We've also got the LFO modulating the carrier uh, frequency as well. In the panel settings of here, we can switch this back into mono mode. We've got a panning mode as well. And reverse. And then obviously the LFO polarity, unipolar or bipolar LFOs to modulate this. Let's move on to the 12 stage phaser, the MF-103. Right off the bat, gorgeous sounding phaser this. So you've got sweep and resonance controls, either six stage phaser or a 12 stage. And then obviously the modulation amount for the sweep via the LFO. We can also switch this into a high frequency mode as well. Let's 
let's take a look at the back panel again. We're in a stereo mode here right now, and then we've got some additional output modes that you can do as well. I should also mention that you can sync the LFOs to the project tempo here with this button. So there's quite a bit of additional functionality that you didn't have in the original pedals as well. Let's take a look into the chorus now. So again, we can drive the chorus harder, softer. Then you've got the delay settings for the chorus here. And you've got a flanger mode and a chorus mode for this. So we'll take a listen to the chorus. Feedback. Let's pop into flange. Then you've got a mix style here for the overall effect. And then obviously we can dial in the modulation amount to here. So you can hear our flange is now static and we'll dial in some modulation. sync the LFO once again. Let's dial in some SNH. We'll take a look at the back panel again as well here. So we've got the tone, which is the legacy tone from the pedal. We've got a modern tone, which is obviously much cleaner. Uh, we can also switch the delay type for the for the chorus to a ping pong, giving a more stereo feel. And then we've got some loose and strict timing. Uh, we can also change the phase for the output of the uh, chorus as well. So again, you can see pretty subtle to pretty extreme effects that you can get out of this uh, when you start playing around with some of the modulation. So we've got a lot to go through here. I'm going to move on to the delay now. Let's check out the MF-104. So we've got uh, delay times over here. We can set that to sync as well. We've got a short delay mode and a long delay mode. Let's whack that into long first and dial up our feedback. We've got the overall mix knob here again. Try that a little bit more. So uh, in the back panel here, there's some useful tools. Um, we can change the type from echo to a ping pong delay to give it a more stereo feel. So this is a typically really dark sounding delay. I believe it is a BBD delay this. Uh, we can switch into the analog mode, which is gonna be slightly brighter still relatively subdued and then the modern mode will be a lot brighter a lot cleaner we can loosen up the timing here and then the bypass mode you have normal and spillover uh, the normal mode when you bypass the pedal you'll hear it's immediate if we decide to switch this to spillover mode, uh, when you activate the pedal, it will actually let the delay lines run out. So we dial up the feedback a little bit here. Which is quite handy for delay throws. Then we can also modulate the delay line as well, the pitch of the delay or the speed of the delay. Uh, we'll switch this to a sine wave and let's just dial in some slow modulation first.
and the pitch really kind of works the way that you'd expect an analog delay to with that speeding up and down effect. And this allows us to give some sort of chorus effects as well if we switch this into the short mode. Just a small amount of pitch modulation. And this just adjusted time in real time. Here you go. And once again, obviously, the LFO uh, can also be synced, so everything is locked to your project tempo. Right, I love this next one. This is the MRF, the MF-105. All right, so this is a filter bank that can be animated uh, through patterns that play through the various different filters. I'm just going to initialize the preset first. There you go. You've got fixed filter frequencies for all of these. Um, this adjusts the volume output for each of the filters, and then when you dial in the pattern, it sweeps through them, uh, and I'll show you the pattern editor in just a second. We can run through some of the preset ones first. Let's just, uh, we'll leave the mix at maximum, yeah. Now we can also decide whether we want the bass frequencies, which would be this top section here, those readouts. If we switch that to the mid, it shifts all the filters up to higher frequencies. Leave it down there for now. Now let's just engage the pattern and take a listen to what is happening here. So let's sync the rate. And we can play around with the envelope shape. So by adjusting the filter uh, volume for each, the output for these, you can sort of change up the patterns as well. Now in the additional settings menu here, we've got an actual full-fledged pattern editor. And this is really cool because you can actually dial in the amount of uh, steps for each one. You'll see you've got a really large amount of steps that you can put in here. But you can do sort of polyrhythmic stuff for this as well. Um, if we clear this entire pattern, we can adjust the amount of steps for each frequency. So we could have five there, maybe eight over there, so on. So you see adjusting the amount of steps for each one so you're not playing through a fixed amount for each pattern and then on top of that I'm doing that with a right click and then from there onwards you can then enable the filters in the pattern uh, as you see fit and whenever these are highlighted that is going to sound through the respective filter that you have here so we can play that back now we can then also pronounce the peaks uh, there's an alternate envelope mode and we can switch this into mono as well and then obviously adjust the output of the filters. Play around with the envelope shape again. So that's more of a, a ramp down and then a ramp up. Now, this is uh, really, really great on sort of pad material as well. I'm just going to enable a pad sound to play here rather so we can take a listen to this. I'll grab one of the preset patterns again, take a listen to this. And just so you can see the difference. That's the signal I'm feeding through this. We'll back down on the drive slightly. And let's enable this again and maybe slow down the rate. And let's switch this into stereo mode. Just the envelope. So you get some really lovely movement under this one. Thank <laughs> you. 
Should we mix that back with the original signal now? Cool, so let's check out the last one, the Freak Box. Now this one's an oscillator uh, which tracks the pitch of the incoming signal. Uh, we'll just set this to the initialized preset quickly. I'll show you what this does. Uh, you can get some really nice sort of distortion effects out of this um, by using the FM and modulating the uh, VCO that's uh, tracking your pitch on this one. Uh, so let's take a listen. I'm going to bring the saw wave back in here. And let's activate this. Uh, right, so let's uh, mix in the uh, oscillator amount. So you can hear yeah, there's our oscillator, we can select between a triangle, a saw wave, square, or pulse. Come back to our square wave here. You can also dial in amount of FM. The envelope amount is tracking the amplitude of the incoming signal. Uh, obviously the frequency is the pitch of the oscillator. But the real magic comes in when you hit the sync button and it pitch tracks your incoming signals. So take a listen to this. So you can mix this back with your original signal now. Real nice, gritty kind of sound. Let's bring in our filter again. Really, really cool. I just love the tone that I'm getting out of these. Uh, so again, stereo mono settings there, and then your envelope controls, which can be frequency and level, or if you want to exclude the level from that only, you can just have the frequency. <laughs> Right, so we've taken a look at all of the pedals, taken a look at the controls, and got an idea of the kind of sounds you're going to get out of this. I love the sound of this so far. I think they've done a great job of really capturing that sort of proper um, Moog analog feel to it. Now, obviously, I don't have the hardware with me here, but uh, to, my, to my ears, they sound pretty authentic, I believe. Um, but now, they do have another trick up their sleeve. You'll notice on all of the plugins, uh, you've got this little CV dial up at the top here. Now, the original ones actually had a CV inputs that you could link control data from different pedals uh, to automate things like uh, delay times and uh, uh, filter amounts and, and cutoffs and such. Uh, now, most has gone about this in a really interesting way and it's it's not something I've seen in uh, other plugin bundles before now initially um, I would have thought that they would have put this into sort of like a, a host plugin where you could use modular connections like you would in any sort of other VST modular setup or, uh, or modular synth uh, plugin but they've gone about this in an interesting way um, which actually allows you to cross modulate these pedals across different channels so if you had these all in a single uh, sort of modular environment it would be as a single insert so you would only be able to modulate those uh, within that chain specifically um, but if we open up these cv connections over here uh, let's take a look uh, we'll let's take the uh, the Murph, for example, we'll open up the CV here as well. And um, if you wanted to modulate anything, for example, like the cutoff of the filter, so we'll activate our filter. You can go over here, click on the CV input, and you'll see that you now have inputs from all of the active uh, pedals in your project currently. 
So we have this one, we're looking for our MRF, which is the 105. And you'll notice as well, if you have multiple instances of the MRF in your project, uh, it gets an, a, a sort of a unique identity number here. So we're looking for NH. XJ is the one that's going to be sending the data to our filter. So we can use the output of the sequence of phase, for example, and input that into the cutoff controls. So let's just zero the amount of envelope tracking for this. And you'll see we actually get a readout now. Uh, the filter is being modulated by the phase of this pattern that's been generated here. And obviously that can be adjusted by the rate. So you'll see that slows down over there now. If we speed this up, the phase is faster. So we can now take a listen to our filter. Even if this one is deactivated, we're still getting the modulation from this phase coming through to this one. And let's just sync this actually. So now we're getting LFO modulation on our cutoff filter, which previously you couldn't do. You only have the envelope um, tracking on that one. Let's slow this down. Now, obviously you could do this in Bitwig, for example, with one of the modulators in Bitwig and just assign it to one of these controls. Um, but you can't do that in all DAWs. And what's interesting then is you can have this sort of mimic the movements from different effects in your chain as well. So we activate this one now as well. They now synced and we could cross modulate other stuff here as well. Let's, uh, let's open up something else, for example, let's take the, or actually open up the CV for this one. Let's take a look at the LFO sweep or the, let's take a look at the mix here so we can modulate the mix with uh, let's go for the envelope from the filter. So we've got the envelope dialed in here. And let's dial this one up. So you can see how they're cross-modulating now between the two phases from this one, modulating the cutoff. And then obviously the, the envelope from this affecting the mix on this one, yeah. And this goes for pretty much anything on any of these. If you open them all up, you've got various different uh, controls and settings. Uh, we could adjust delay time as well uh, for the delays. Or let's maybe modulate the mix of this one from the LFO on the ring modulator, for example. So now we're modulating the mix over here. We can LF sync the LFO on our ring modulator. And let's check the LFO into sign. There you go. Now we can activate our delay. There you go. So it's a it's a really interesting way to play around with these really novel feature. This and um, like I said, also the the interesting thing with this is the fact that you could mimic movement from these pedals across multiple channels. You're not linked into a single modular environment where you need to do these all in one chain. You could have uh, movement from the filter on a bass channel, uh, animating the phase of something else on a pad somewhere else in your track, and um, yeah, you could really kind of go to town with. Uh, complex chains of these and um, very, very cool feature that I think is very well implemented 
into these plugins from Moog. Right, so that's pretty much a wrap. Just to look at all the features in this, um, I do recommend you go check these out. If you are looking for something that has an authentic analog feel to it, I think these are fantastic. They are available now from Moog as VST and AU plugins. Yeah, so I'm actually looking forward to seeing what they come up with next. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will catch you soon right here at Sonic Academy. Till then, take care. Cheers. Thanks everyone for watching, we really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video then smash a like and if you want to be notified about new videos hit the subscribe and notification buttons.